Hi, I'm John, and today I'm going to be talking about Linux Lite OS. Uh, this is kind of a second in a series of many different videos I'm going to do talking about different uh, Linux operating systems, uh, different desktops, that type of thing. And I'm going to go through them one by one. I should mention that I did something the other day. I tried Puppy Linux because I heard that it was really low resource, and I started off doing that. And I found out that that was almost worthless. That was almost totally worthless. I didn't see that that was a good thing to do at all. And I don't even think I could install OBS on it. I'm probably wrong about that. I'm going to have to look into it a little bit more. And they were, were saying on their website that, that it's grandpa friendly. Uh, I'm the age of a grandpa. I don't have any grandkids yet, but... Uh, I don't think it was grandpa friendly at all, so I'm going to have to do a little bit more research on that. But today I decided to go with Linux Lite because it supposedly is lighter on resources and it would kind of make sense because um, it's Ubuntu based, based on Debian, and then also uh, it has an XFCE desktop that is evidently modified. and and you can kind of see that if you get into it and use it. So anyway, you've got a um, basic kind of XFCE uh, desktop. Uh, and I think that's one of the things that anybody would tell you about any distribution. If they're using an XFCE desktop, then it's going to be lighter on resources than cinnamon or plasma, that type of thing. Uh, and this is more of a traditional kind of Linux desktop, uh, I think, rather than some of the more modern things, even though they've modified this to a point where it could be considered kind of modern. It almost feels like uh, GNOME sometimes uh, on a couple of occasions, but not too much. And when I do these videos, like here with Linux Lite, I, I'm really doing it first time looking at it. I'm really not uh, going through this and finding all the ins and outs. I just want to find out if the average user like myself would think this was a good transition from Windows to Linux. Would this be good and kind of on a scale of 1 to 10? What would you think? I think when I was going through MX Linux, I think... Uh, that gets right up there on a scale of 1 to 10, probably an 8 or a 9 if you're jumping from Windows to Linux. Mint, I almost think it's a 10. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to talk about this a little bit. So you've got some things that come with this by default, and one of them is the Google Chrome browser. And uh, I'm not particularly wild about that. So... It's something that I'm, I would uninstall on this uh, because in my world, uh, Google products are spyware and you should use them as little as possible. And uh, so what I did is I did install uh, Chromium, the non-Google Chrome browser that you can get uh, through the package manager. Now... One of the things I noticed when I installed this is that uh, when I installed it, I wasn't used to this, that you have to go back in and if you go to the menu, let, let me put it this way, if you go into the menu after you've installed it, it won't show up on the menu. You have to actually reboot in order for it to show up on the menu. So that's kind of a thing and that's not something I necessarily uh, liked about it. Uh, you know, I'm used to uh, like MX Linux or Linux Mint, where if you install something, you will see it in the menu right away. And another thing about it is if you look down here, uh, whenever you open something up, uh, like, you know, a browser, uh, instead of having just icons being open down here, it will tell you the name of the... Uh, program that's open. I don't know if you can make those smaller or not, or just make those into icons. I don't know. Typically, I don't think you can, but uh, 
I thought that Linux Lite was a little bit slow on the install, on the uptake. <laughs> I, I thought it took quite a while. I, I think it took twice as much time to install as it does with like Mint uh, or MX Linux. I would say Mint is probably one of the fastest. And it sounds like a stupid thing or something that's really, you know, kind of being trivial. Uh, but Mint is very fast on the install. And Linux Lite, as light as it says it is, uh, fairly slow on the install, really. And then uh, immediately there was a lot of updates to do. Let's talk a little bit about what's in the system. Uh, my system information. Uh, Linux Lite 6.6, .6, so it's the latest version, and it's based on uh, Ubuntu's Jammy Jellyfish. Uh, once again, my CPU is an AMD A8 7600 Radeon R7 um, processor, and I have about 16 gigabytes of RAM running, and it's an old HP computer uh, from 10 years ago, but I am using uh, SSD uh, drives, even though on this computer I also have a 2 terabyte old hard drive, but I use that for backing up and things like that. Uh, so... If you take a look at this, um, the kernel is, you know, this real stable kernel, which is Linux 5.15.0-92. This is the same kernel that uh, Linux Mint uses, and I would suspect it does that because it's, you know, bringing that in from Ubuntu uh, as a base. So, anyway, uh, so far, you know, pretty similar to a lot of things. And I would imagine uh, that this might be similar to Linux Mint XFCE. And I will be trying that uh, as well. I'm going to try these different flavors of these. But if you notice the screen, you know, looks really clear, looks really good. And if you were a, a Windows user, you'd, you'd think that's pretty nice. But... Uh, one of the things I don't particularly like about it is the uh, is the package manager. And let me just log in here real quick or give my authentication. Um, you, this is what you have. Uh, and I guess if you're a brand new user, this I thought was always daunting to me. And back when I started with the Raspberry Pi, uh, you'd get this kind of thing where I really like package managers where they have the program separated with an icon. It just seems to be the way to go. In this case, uh, you can go in here on the left side and, uh, you know, choose something. But... Um, you know, like, oh, all sorts of different desktops, that type of thing. But what's really kind of hard about this is that you kind of have to know what you're looking for. You're, it's not going to be the kind of thing that's easily browsable. Uh, not something that really works that way. I'm going to take a drink. It's dry. It's January in Minnesota. Uh, anyway, um, this is what you get, and it kind of drives me crazy. Like, when I went to install OBS, I had to just type in the search OBS. And it's not like I couldn't find it, but you better know exactly what you're looking for, and it doesn't give you any kind of um, uh, way for discovery. And I think the newer package managers make a lot of sense. And this is kind of a throwback. I, I can't understand why uh, a distribution like this wouldn't have uh, a package manager similar to what Mint does or what MX Linux does. Even MX Linux isn't as good as Mint I, or Pop! OS. Uh, anyway, you 
you don't really get to discover things. Like, suppose I was, uh, let's take this out. It didn't even find OBS. Um, you know, see, this is the thing. Like, suppose I want to put in Catfish, even though I've already got it installed. Let's see if it searches it. So yeah, this is what you get. Okay, there it is. So Catfish, it did find. I was doing a filter up here, so I apologize. I got to do the search over here. So let's try OBS. Because I've never really used this system before. So this is brand new to me. Let's see what it says uh, for OBS. Okay, see, and then you get a big list. Now, if you go down the list, you'll see OBS Studio. But if you're coming from, um, say, Windows, and you don't understand, you know, the way programs are, are done this way, uh, it might be really confusing to you. So it's kind of a big strike against it for people that are coming from Windows and going to Linux. So that alone makes it a little bit more difficult because people are going to go, well, what programs can I use with it? What's going to replace what I have now? It would be easier to browse through like a discovery store or a package manager like they have in Mint rather than something like this. So that's my only point. Not that you can't find it. Uh, let's just say, uh, let's see if we have Brave. See if they even have it in their repositories. Let's see if Brave Browser comes up. Uh, it, uh, it does not. Okay. Um, you know, you know, this is the kind of thing that maybe some people out there were talking about the synaptic package manager or things they didn't like uh does it run quickly yeah but it's it's no better i don't think than than mint or mx uh, they do give you some default things here when you download it you'll get the uh, LibreOffice, so you'll get the spreadsheet let's just see how fast it loads so it should be loading up See, and I think that's a little slow. I'm going to take that out. Uh, maybe on the first shot, it's not that good. Let's see what it does for word processor. Let's do that. Yeah, see, it's in my mind, it seems a little bit slow. So it makes me wonder about the code a little bit. Uh, let's try GIMP. So these are some of the things you get with it. A lot of the good basics. Uh, but if you're a person coming from Windows to Linux, you'll have some of those basics, but you won't have them all. And once again, um, yeah, I think it does an okay job, but I think there's some other distributions that evidently are heavier on resources, but still work better um, once again I don't think that the way resources are nowadays with all the RAM that everybody has access to and most computers uh, are much better hardware wise when you're talking Linux but um, I, I don't think it makes much of a difference so uh, let's see what else they have with it uh, catfish file search Calculator, you know, real basic stuff in the image writer. Um, you know, uh, I think you can do, um, you know, it says backups, on-screen keyboard. Uh, you know, just some some bas basic things, if I can talk. And uh, one of the th nice things, though, it does have is one of these XFCE uh, right-click managers and you can get back to applications like I said before on MX Linux uh, XFC really nice as far as that goes so you can access your menu all at once uh, but 
truth be told, I don't see a lot of advantages when you're talking about something that is quote unquote lighter than uh, uh, some of the other distributions out there. I, you know, does that mean it's supposed to be faster? I'm not so sure uh, if it really does that. So it does display everything well. Um, you know, I could see if you were coming from Windows and if you didn't know what you were looking for, you know, this would make some sense. Um, but uh, I think there's better choices than this, and that gets into the more complete distributions that are really, really trying to match up with what uh, Windows is. And I think that package manager is a, kind of a big negative on something like this. You need something that's going to have uh, icons and it's going to be browsable uh, for the average user to, to search and try to find what he's looking for. You can't have lists with all sorts of cryptic uh, file names like it showed and expect to uh, necessarily find what you're looking for. Uh, it would assume that you know what you're doing and getting around. And that's one of the things that some of these distributions, you know, the people that are behind them don't get. Uh, maybe they still figure it's kind of like a hobby, that type of thing. But if you were a, a user coming from uh, Windows, you know, maybe it, it makes sense. Uh, uh, but it, it wouldn't be my first choice at all. Uh, it's, it's nice, it's fine, it runs, it's probably very stable because it's got that stable kernel and all that. But uh, just these couple of things uh, make it a little less friendly for a person coming from Windows going to Linux uh, and certainly from Mac. Uh, and that really just has to do with how you integrate software applications and using a package manager like that. If there's another package manager that you can use uh, on this instead of that one, uh, that's maybe the thing to do. But if you're coming from a place like Windows, you're not going to think like that. You're going to think, um, how come I can't see my icons of, and, of different programs? How come I can't just see what I want uh, kind of one by one instead of just lists? It doesn't really work. So uh, one of the things it does give you um, right on the desktop when you load up, there's a help manual, and it can do some things with tutorials. Uh, uh, you know, this is just a first impression by somebody who's never used it before. And uh, it does, you know, does the upgrades and everything like that. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just I don't think for the average user it's going to be something that you'd really think, wow, this uh, makes it so easy to flip from one thing to another. I wouldn't say that about it. So uh, just kind of my personal opinion. Uh, but the screen is nice. Uh, it's easy to read right out of the box. And, uh, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, just a little slow on the install, a little slow on the boot up. And... Uh, uh, the package manager, not so great. And uh, I don't think it's necessarily the best choice uh, if you're starting out, but it is a choice if you want to do it. And supposedly lower on resources, I don't see any difference between this and anything else. But I don't mean to be negative on it. I, I think it's just fine. Um, but... If I was given a choice, this this wouldn't be my choice. But, uh, those of you out there who love Linux Lite, uh, tell me why you do in the comments. Um, I'm just doing kind of a, a cursory view of it here and uh, just want to get your feelings as to what you think about it. Um, you know, as far as an XFCE desktop, I think a better one is MX Linux, uh, one of the videos I just did. Uh, so, you know, 
one of many desktops that do kind of the same thing, but does a couple of things, I think, that make it a little bit of a, of a lesser draw as far as that goes. Anyway, that's it for today. Uh, I'll do another video uh, with the next operating system. I'll just keep going through one by one. And uh, let me know if you have any questions and leave comments, uh, positive or negative. Maybe I'm totally wrong about this. Maybe there's something magical about this that I've missed, but I'm just going off a first impression of what an everyday user might want it to do. And that's one of the things I always think about Linux is that it should be an operating system for everyday use. It's just you got to find the right one. And uh, I'm not much into it for the hobby aspect. I want to be able to do business. And I have to say, could I do business? Would this be easier to use than other versions of uh, Linux? And, uh, you know, this, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd say it's, you know, probably probably at about a six or so. It, it's not as good as the other ones, I don't think, and it's because of that package manager. Anyway, uh, let me know what your thoughts are. I'm not necessarily right, but uh, interested to see what your opinions are. Anyway, you have a great day, and we'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.